Welcome investors to the Absolute Return Podcast, your source for stock market analysis, global macro musings, and hedge fund investment strategies. Your hosts, Julian Klamachko and Michael Kesslering, aim to bring you the knowledge and analysis you need to become a more intelligent and wealthier investor. This episode is brought to you by Accelerate Financial Technologies. Accelerate, because performance matters. Find out more at accelerateshares.com. Welcome, podcast listeners, to the Absolute Return Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Klamachko. I'm joined by my co-host, Mike Kesslering. And on today's show, we welcome special guest, Vacasa CEO, Matt Robert. Vacasa is the leading vacation rental management platform in North America, and it just announced a $3.75 billion going public transaction. On the show, Matt discusses Vacasa's business model and how it differs from Airbnb, its value proposition and why customers would choose Vacasa, insights into Vacasa's merger with TPG Pace Solutions, the investment case for the stock, and more. So with no further ado, here's our podcast with Vacasa CEO, Matt Robert. Pleased to welcome Vacasa CEO, Matt Roberts, to the show. And Matt, I was going through the investor presentation and man, we need a vacation, some of your properties, especially the ones in Florida that I saw, just look absolutely fantastic. I'm sure they'd be great to stay in, but unfortunately, trapped in the office these days. How about we kick off the podcast talking about you and your background? I went through a bit of your profile, noticed you started at PwC Audit bean counter, but then you moved up to the CFO position, Elon, then CFO at OpenTable, and you progressed at that company, CEO, chairman, a successful exit there. Now, CEO at Vicasa, how did you make that transition? And do you want to just talk about your career in general? What brought you to where you're at today? Sure. Uh, I haven't heard the bean counter thing in a long time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the most recent Part of my career is obviously what I'm doing today, which is running Vacasa. I was on the board. I joined Vacasa's board in 2018. And when we were expanding a search for a new CEO, uh, then basically uh, I decided I'll come in for a period of time on an interim basis. Uh, and then the global health pandemic hit. <laughs> so uh, uh, that plan changed pretty dramatically. And I became sort of permanent CEO during the pandemic. And so the prior to that, Open Table had a great time. What an awesome company to run. Uh, very much of a beloved brand, adding a lot of value to our customers and to the diners. And uh, I think one of the things that's so appealing about Vacasa for me in terms of initially joining the board and then subsequently decided to, you know, to step into the CEO role is how many parallels I saw in terms of how when you focus on a local supply problem to solve, you're really able to create a very valuable business that has very, you know, great growth characteristics and a lot of defensibility to it. So that that's kind of like a little bit of a roll forward of my career uh, to, to today. Sounds like a bit of a seamless transition, despite being uh, initially on an interim basis, but going from Open Table CEO to now CEO Vacasa. I was wondering if you could touch on and describe the business in general. I note that you describe it as the leading vacation rental management platform in North America. Can you talk to us about how it makes money? Sure. So what we do is is have a different focus than what maybe some of the brands that you're more familiar with, which are the larger OTAs, who are very much focused on the demand side of the equation, marketing to generate guest demand. We're very much identifying the, the pain point for the overall ecosystem is in the supply. There's not enough nights for people to rent. There's a lot of people that want to rent. So we set out to build a platform uh, that's technology foundation, but it enables these services that let a homeowner that is uh, wanting to decide to start to rent, we do everything that's necessary. So literally, a homeowner can just hand us the keys, book the nights they want to use for personal use, and we write them a check. Uh, and our solution is aimed towards three different people, really, people that have purchased a home that have never rented before. Over 20% of our new sales are people never rented before. 
because we just make it so much easier for them to start renting that they're new to the whole system. The other is somebody that used a smaller property manager or they did it themselves. So those are the, the three different ways. And in each case, we just fundamentally make more money for homeowners. I mean, I think our core value proposition is to make more homeowner, uh, more, homeowners more money. And we share in that. So our, t- you know, our percentage that we get as a commission on the rent that we generate is roughly in that 25 to 30% rate. And that's what we get paid. So there's a complete alignment of interest. We don't make money unless they make money. And now a word from our sponsor, Accelerate. Do you want to diversify your investment portfolio while benefiting the planet? The Accelerate Carbon Negative Bitcoin ETF, symbol ABTC on the Toronto Stock Exchange, provides investors with exposure to Bitcoin while protecting the environment. Accelerate implements a global tree planting campaign to sequester carbon emissions and help fight climate change. Up to 10% of ABTC's 69 basis point management fee will be allocated to Accelerate's annual tree planting campaign. For each $1,000 invested in ABTC, an estimated one net ton of carbon dioxide is expected to be sequestered each year. Buy Bitcoin, save the planet. Find out more at investabtc.com. So would it be fair to, to first, I guess, to when you're looking at your business model versus, say, Airbnb, would it be fair to say that they're more of a demand aggregator, whereas you're really focused on aggregating the supply? And then as well, could you you mentioned making more money for homeowners? Could you could you drill down a bit? Economics work for the homeowner under your platform versus say a competitor platform. Absolutely. So the first thing is, I would agree with your assessment that we're much more focused on the supply aggregation. And we built a technology platform that allows that to happen. So at our core, we're a technology company because frankly, none of this would make any kind of sense economically if we didn't ground it in a strong proprietary technology platform. We just wouldn't be able to get the unit economics or the transaction economics to pencil out. Because we have built that platform and it has great scale advantage as you grow and, for example, add density in a market, the contribution margin per market expands. It gets easier to sell in a market. It gets lower to the cost to service it. So it all works. Uh, so yes, we're focused on the supply side as compared to predominantly, as compared to the larger uh, OTAs that are our partners from a distribution perspective. But interesting to note, 35% of the nights that we sell are from Vacasa directly. So I think that surprises people because they the brand isn't, from a consumer perspective, as well known as clearly as a uh, some of the larger OTAs. Uh, that has grown considerably. That 35% used to be 18% in 2018. Part of the growth is we just started focusing on it, frankly. Uh, there was always an understanding that supply was the, the key and our predominant value proposition was aggregating the supply. So we focused all of our technology development dollars and efforts against building the best in class platform to aggregate that supply. But about 18 months ago, we decided to start focusing on the demand side of the equation too. And voila, you know, we go from 18% up to already 35% uh, direct. But our number one objective is to make homeowners the most amount of money. And you do that by uh, distributing that availability everywhere, not only on our site but also on our distribution partner sites as well. So we're actually very important partners to our distribution channels. We're actually a significant amount of the number of listings in our top markets. So about 44% of Airbnb's listings in Destin, Florida are Vacasa. Uh, about a third of Steamboat, Colorado for, for Verbo, Vacasa units. But I think the more interesting thing from my perspective is that we create higher performing inventory. And we do that by basically our yield optimization is very much akin to what airlines do. So that is so much different than the industry historically, because the industry historically has been either you do it yourself, so you don't have the sophisticated tools and technology, or you work with the local property manager 
who also has not invested the technology dollars to build the AI engine and the machine learning that we do. We, we post 12 million updates to our algorithm a day. Wow. We simultaneously A-B test on every single channel, including our own in real time to eke out basis points, improvement and conversion. So this is just a whole different level of yield optimization and you know yield management than what exists in the industry. Uh, and as a result, we make our homeowners more money. That's a really simple value proposition in terms of making homeowners more money. And I definitely understand the economies of scale. Certainly a local property manager wouldn't be able to have 12 million updates per day. And in the travel business, we went through a super tough time with respect to COVID. Uh, many in that sector saw their businesses, you know, dive bomb in terms of customer demand. But I'm looking through Vacasa's historical financial statements or the historical uh, financial results in terms of revenue. And it didn't look like you guys skipped a beat in 2020. How was it going through COVID? How did it affect the business? Well, we did. We definitely missed a beat uh, because markets, some of our markets closed entirely. Uh, from a compliance perspective and a regulatory perspective. And also, we were not able to add as many properties in 2020 as we would have liked to do um, because it was just pretty much impossible to be out there selling uh, during the, the heart of the pandemic. What is interesting is, as you noted, we're basically, we're probably flat 2020 over 2019. And I think there's very I'm not sure of another travel company that can say that. Yeah. <laughs> so in relative terms, for sure. But you know, when we're we're looking at a percent uh, Kager for for annual growth rate, you know, we we uh, we we aspired much better than flat, right? right. So, uh, but the pandemic was interesting on two two levels uh, in terms of managing through it. It was incredibly challenging, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, there was both the economic and also just the, you know, the impact on people's lives. Uh, people were going through a lot of disruption on a personal level, you know, kids staying home, having to figure out caregiving situations, being stuck at home. Uh, there was, and there was no end in sight. And that was the thing that people in hindsight now, we think, oh, well, there's the vaccine and, and everything sort of is going to turn out okay. But at the moment, we were talking about still eight to 10 years for vaccine development and no, no end in sight. And so that was a, the unknown was probably the most difficult thing to deal with for people. Uh, and for me personally, as a leader, uh, how do you communicate that the way that helps people, you know, feel like it's all going to be okay. Uh, the interesting thing though, uh, Julian, that I think is that equally as challenging was the ramp back up because it was a light switch. Every market, as they opened, they got booked. Wow. And we went from having people on furlough to clamoring to get everybody back and actually even add more people than we had before in time to service Fourth of July weekend. And that was its own, you know, much better problem to have, but it was it was a challenge nonetheless. I, I think that we did take the opportunity to rethink elements of the business that could be more efficient, more effective, uh, just like you should in any any situation like this, try to figure out ways to get better. And I hope that we did that. Um, I know that this year, it sure feels like we, we are benefiting from some of those uh, analytics that we applied to the business during the heart of the pandemic. And now a word from our sponsor, Accelerate, one of Canada's most innovative and fastest growing alternative investment solution providers. With a suite of institutional caliber alternative ETFs for investors seeking diversification and long-term performance, the Accelerate Arbitrage Fund, symbol ARB on the TSX, is the world's first SPAC-focused ETF with a diversified portfolio of SPAC and merger arbitrage opportunities in an easy-to-use, low-cost ETF. The Accelerate Arbitrage Fund ETF trades under the symbol ARB on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Find out more at Accelerate Shares. Dot com. When I can just imagine the even when you talk about the ramp back up, you know, dynamic pricing to be able to price things correctly, all, all historical models would be kind of thrown out. But moving forward as well, you're you are adding a few a few new things to the platform, such as a loyalty program. You're adding um, customized guides. Can you talk a little bit about 
the challenges and opportunity for implementing these initiatives. And, and specifically, I guess, as well, I'd be very curious on the loyalty side, how you foresee that affecting some of your conversion is that 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 obviously seems like something that could really help out in that respect. Yeah, our predominant focus on on for the business in general is is really continuing to scale the platform, meaning add properties. Uh, and then more importantly, make sure that those properties are set up for success uh, uh, because we don't sell properties, we sell nights. Uh, so we're trying to get the most available nights per property and then sell those through. So all of our real effort and prioritization from a technology perspective, which is usually where you can find where what people value the most is where do they spend their tech dollars, is all around uh, around optimizing, growing and optimizing our our base of properties and availability. Uh, elements that can deal with the guest experience and then the homeowner experience for sort of adjacencies are also growth opportunities for us. But the main focus is going to continue to be about, you know, how do we make the most revenue possible for our homeowners and service service them and the guests to the best of our ability. I think some of the loyalty programs and ideas around that are really meant to acknowledge that we have other opportunities to grow the business as we move forward because we do have the relationship with with the guests and we are supporting the end-to-end experience. I mean, one of the things that was different about Open Table is as much as we solved a really uh, interesting pain point, which is picking up the phone and having to dial and get a reservation and we made that seamless and easy and and got a lot of love for that. We weren't the ones that greeted you when you walked into the restaurant. We weren't the ones that ensured that the hospitality that you received was world class. I mean, we think we, our restaurant partners did a great job, but we didn't control that. But cost is different. We actually have the opportunity to really create a hospitality brand in the short term vacation rental category, which is ca- characterized by a wide variety of property types, which is its appeal, right? People don't, you know, they don't want it to be all cookie cutter, but they want a consistent experience throughout. And so that's where we come in and that's where we're applying technology. We can do things like have a guest app where you can do request a late checkout, early check-in. If there's anything that you need, just message us within the app 24-7. That's very hotel-like in a diverse property type ecosystem. And you guys seem super busy these days. If dealing with the great reopening wasn't enough work for you, you guys are going public too. So work on top of work recently announced uh, going public through a merger with SPAC TPG Pace Solutions, $3.75 billion deal. What do you hope to accomplish in this going public transaction? Well, I think uh, it's, as you'd imagine, any capital raise is really focused on making sure that we have uh, the adequate amount of capital to fund our ambitions for the for the company. I mean, we're less than 1% penetrated against some pretty massive uh, opportunity, market opportunity. So the main dollars will be spent against, we're going to more than triple our research and development uh, dollars, uh, our technology spend, uh, which is just going to allow even more innovation to surface for our guests and for our homeowners. And we're going to have more capital that we can deploy against our portfolio uh, strategy, which is when we acquire smaller property managers uh, and also hire more salespeople and spend more on marketing to acquire more properties. So that's it's really a, a growth uh, situation where we, we're so early days uh, that this capital will just help us to, you know, in many cases, accelerate our growth. Oh, I find it fascinating to hear behind the scenes details and insights into the deal process. So I was wondering, how did this deal come about? Uh, are you able to give us uh, any insights into the background? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we, we've we reached a scale uh, as a business that uh, we are able to be a public company. Uh, I think you need to have, in my opinion, and based on my experience running public companies, you need to have a certain scale growth rate and maturity of both the operations team themselves, as well as the systems that support uh, running the business. And we were able to you know, get all of those things done uh, and check those uh, boxes. And then it's a matter of you know, what's the most effective way to approach the the capital markets and, and bring that money onto the balance sheet. 
And there's a number of ways we could, we could clearly have just done a traditional IPO. Uh, and ultimately, at the end of the day, you end up at the same end place, which you have a ticker symbol that's traded uh, on one of the exchanges. Uh, the reason that we're really excited about being able to have done this SPAC process uh, with TBG Pace is one structurally their their SPAC, for example, doesn't have any warrants. It's very uh, it's very issuer friendly. It, in many ways, if you look at what the offering construct is, it looks very much like a traditional IPO. There's only there's no secondary sales. Nobody is selling. Uh, it's all primary uh, shares. It's a relatively low float relative to uh, this the market cap uh, post deal. Uh, so why why do this way versus a traditional IPO? The, the partner TBG Pays, this is I think their seventh SPAC. Uh, they're very uh, very very good partners for us because of their domain expertise in travel. For example, Carl Peterson is co-founder of uh, Hotwire, uh, sits on uh, you know m- many many travel related company boards, uh, and they have deep marketplace technology marketplace experience as well. So what I have already seen the value in is that relationship uh, and the experience that they bring uh, to, to, to the business uh, more than just raising the capital. And in the end, the capital is going to be raised pretty similarly to how we would have done it for a traditional IPO anyway. And from TPG's perspective, they noted the investment case for Vacasa. They highlighted a number of characteristics, including large and fragmented total addressable market, secular tailwinds, competitive moat, and attractive unit economics. From an investor's perspective, Matt, can you highlight some things above and beyond uh, TPG's broad investment case? Why should investors pay attention to Vacasa? Well, I think if you pull back the lens a little bit here and just understand what where category we're playing in. We're, we've, uh, we're operating in vacation rentals, uh, which is the hottest category in travel, period. It's growing at 2x the rate of traditional accommodations. And it's, it's not slowing down. This isn't a COVID thing. I think people have this sense of, oh, well, that's just COVID and everybody want to do vacation rentals. Now they'll go back. The reality is this started back you know, over a decade ago, there was only a 10% preference for vacation rentals back in 2010. It grew to 30% uh, by the 2019. And it's accelerated, certainly during the pandemic, uh, roughly 19% of the people over the last 18 months, it's the first time spending any time in a vacation rental. It's the first time that they, so it's a whole new cohort of users got introduced to the value of vacation rentals. And of those 52% say they now prefer vacation rentals. Uh, so I think as we're able to add, and so so that that's the big picture. The big picture is the trends are our friend, right? There's more adoption by guests to this category. And importantly for us, more homeowners are deciding to rent their second homes. You know, that's actually gone up by more than 2X as well. It's up to 60% preference of, or indication of interest to renting their homes. It makes sense. Think about it's not weird anymore to share stuff, right? Well, for Uber, you know, you get in other people's cars now. You know, back in 2010, it wasn't as normal to do those type of things. So the sharing economy has really been a trend that has helped us get more, unlock more supply in in the market. So I think the main takeaway from an investor's perspective is: is the category large and growing? Yes. Uh, is this a differentiated offering within that category? Absolutely. We are the only scaled supply centered person, <laughs> like a company. That's it. It's us. Uh, there's other smaller companies, some regional companies, but with a technology focus and technology platform and at scale, it's Vicasa. And so if you believe in this category, and you believe that supply is going to be the most critical factor to support the growth in the business, then Vacasim offers a very unique opportunity uh, to, to participate in this in these trends. So say some of our listeners have a, a vacation house that they're not using as much as they'd like to. How can they start making money through Vacasim's platform? Well, uh, hopefully they will have heard from us numerous times by our marketing team. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the easiest thing to do is, uh, you know, our site has a join us effective 
the, you know, and what we walk you through the whole process. I mean, the, the team, there's an onboarding team that'll, that'll take care of. I mean, the, the main value proposition that we have is we just take this on for you. Uh, so we take pictures of the properties. We make sure there's virtual 3D tours. We write all the copy for you. Uh, we do all the pricing, the the marketing, and then all the servicing necessary to to do it. So you literally just need to decide how many nights you want to use for your personal use and then collect a check. All right. Prior to wrapping things up here, Matt, just have one last question, a fun question in two parts. What is your favorite rental property on the platform? And then number two, any recommendations uh, for us if we're looking to take a vacation? Yeah, so uh, I can't really answer the first one because it's like when my older son asked me if I'm if I, if he's my favorite. And <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I say uh, they're all your favorite. <laughs> you're tied. Uh, you're all my favorite. Um, but uh, you know, we have amazing property you know, over thirty thousand properties on the platform right now. I think what's interesting, uh, what I'm kind of excited about is is I think we mentioned a little bit, but we closed on the acquisition of Turnkey, uh, which was our second largest competitor. We closed on that in uh, in April, and we're going to be continuing to integrate through the balance of this year. But we're adding some new markets like Key West, uh, which I think will be a fun new addition and a new selection uh, for for people to to visit. All right, perfect. Well, there you have it, Key West. I could uh, use a booking there in the near term, but I digress. If investors are interested in checking out the stock, uh, the TPG SPAC currently under the symbol TPGS. And when the deal completes, I believe that's expected in the fourth quarter, it'll be trading under the symbol VCSA. So Matt, wish you all the best of luck and exciting times ahead for sure. Thank you guys. Really appreciate the time. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to the Absolute Return Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Accelerate Financial Technologies. Accelerate, because performance matters. Find out more at accelerateshares.com. The views expressed in this podcast are the personal views of the participants and do not reflect the views of Accelerate. No aspect of this podcast constitutes investment, legal, or tax advice. Opinions expressed in this podcast should not be viewed as a recommendation or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any securities or investment strategies. The information and opinions in this podcast are based on current market conditions and may fluctuate and change in the future. No representation or warranty, expressed or implied, is made on behalf of Accelerate. As to the accuracy or completeness of the information contained in this podcast. Accelerate does not accept any liability for any direct, indirect, or consequential loss or damage suffered by any person as a result of relying on all or any part of this podcast, and any liability is expressly disclaimed.